If I asked you, what do you think is the most corrupt thing possible? What would you answer? I assume a lot of you would probably say that it's the government. And as an ex-government employee, I would answer you, hey, yeah, that seems about right, not gonna lie, governments are pretty corrupt. But what if I said that governments are not the most corrupt thing possible? What if I said that there's something far larger in the scale of corruption than governments? Honestly, governments don't even come close to the corruption that we're talking about. And the most scary part about it is, it's the fact that no one ever mentions it, because most people do not understand it. And that is statistical corruption. And this time we're going to be talking about survivorship bias. This is an extremely potent example when corruption of statistical data happens and people don't even notice that it happens. Just have a look at this image for a second. And I want to tell you the story behind the image, okay? Um, this is an image from World War II. Um, it's from the US, I was about to say US Army. It's from the US Air Force, obviously, okay? Um, and what it is, is a rough representation of some data, some bivariate data, you might say, that was collected from the aircraft of the US Air Force. Would anyone like to have a guess what this data represents? Parent, what do you think? Bullets is a very good guess. Does anyone want to be a little more specific? Sean. I was going to say icing on the plate. Uh, what? <laughs> icing on the plate. Icing on the... Oh, oh, ice forming like when you play... Yeah, okay, sure, sure. I'm, I'm going to go with bullets. Okay, now, um, these are places where uh, there were, you know, bullet damage found on aircraft returning to the US Air Force. Now, when you're designing fighter or bomber aircraft, like they were in the Second World War, um, you kind of have this tension between two different things, right? You want your aircraft to be armored. You want to protect your aircraft because then they'll come back, right? And that's, that's really good. But you don't want too, arm too much armor. Why not? Because then you can't fly, right? Um, you can't take off. You have less range, so you can't uh, go to a further target or things like that, right? So you want enough armor, but not too much. So they gathered some data to try and help them work out, well, can I put more armor on some areas and less armor on others? Now, when you have a look at this, I want you to think about what conclusion the aircraft designers would have made when they had a look at all their aircraft and where they got shot. Where do you think they should put the armor? So, this is an absolutely fabulous example, because it pretty much covers everything that we want to know. You have your statistical data, and you have your objective that you want to fulfill with data. Because data by itself is absolutely worthless if you are not trying to understand something from it, or draw a conclusion from it. And in this case, we're going to take, for example, uh, this. So, the first thing you need to understand about data is what it's about. And we understand that these are uh, bullet holes, the places where the planes got shot. When you get any sort of data, when we're talking about statistics, the first thing you need to do when you're doing any sort of statistical analysis is ask yourself only one question. And if that question cannot be answered to a satisfying degree, all of your data is absolute garbage and should be thrown out the window because it's absolutely worthless. And that question is one of the most simplest questions that you can ever ask anyone. Why? When you're looking at this picture and you know that this is, the, uh, that this is a, re a visual representation of a date where planes got shot, you ask yourself only one simple question. Why does the data represent currently the things that it does represent. And then you under, uh, and then you're, uh, when you're asking this question, you will usually understand is this data true or false. Now, spoiler, obviously this data is correct, but we need to understand why this data is not applicable to the goal that uh, our boy right here has set out. And that would be where to place the armor. Because we have gotten the statistics of where the planes are getting shot, and then we want to make those pl places safer because, you know, that's where they're getting shot. Logic, right? But 
To do this, you need to understand the data actually fits uh, what you are trying to ex extrapolate. And in this case, we're going to be going back to the question why. Why are the bullet holes in the places that they are? When we're looking at this, it seems a little bit strange. And this is not going to be always the case for every sort of data, but you need to ask, uh, but you will always need to ask yourself the question, why the data looks like it does and why doesn't it look differently? Why is X possible and Y is not possible? In this case, well, it's obviously that there's something wrong with the data because this is a whole plane, but the dots are only in very specific places. You think ev uh, you think if someone is shooting uh, shooting uh, uh, shooting at you and they don't have a hundred percent accuracy, and some of the shots can be pretty much uh, thought of as random variable uh, ra uh, random, then this, they, these shots should be shown everywhere, right? But there's no uh, but there's no uh, but there's, uh, there's no registered shots in the cockpit at the well frontal cockpit. I guess this is a second cockpit or a gunner's something. I don't know. Uh, nothing on the motors, and you would think that, you know, if someone's shooting you, they're, uh, they're gonna aim for the most vulnerable spots, the places that you get shot and you die, or, you know, that, ta uh, that takes the plane out of commission. And, you know, that's obviously the engines, the cockpits, some places that can easily be shot and, you know, uh, pretty much sawed off. For example, this place right here seems like a pretty good place to shoot, and maybe a couple of shots can destabilize it if, uh, if lucky enough, right? But we don't see any shots in these locations. And the question now becomes, well, the data should probably at least show one or two shots in these locations, right? It's understandable if there's a lot like, you know, in the most, uh, in the biggest areas, that's completely fine. But why are there only shot? but why, why aren't there shots in some areas at all? And that's the question you need to answer yourself. Well, then you understand, then you, th that's a good question. And for this example, it's the right question. And the answer to that question is, well, they can't exactly uh, get data from planes that don't return. AKA, if you get shot down, that means you're not returning and you cannot become a statistic. AKA, survivorship bias. It's the, it's the simple situation where you can accidentally take a group of people that all sp uh, fit a specific criteria and they answer in ways because they fit a specific criteria. Is Does that ring any bells? Nowadays, it is extremely popular to do aggregated polls or polls in general uh, from major news networks that want to push a narrative. I'm sure everyone can think, uh, think of at least one uh, news station that tries to push narratives and then their polls are extremely, wow, who would have expected, extremely one-sided. Because that, they're essentially using intended survivorship bias. They are, uh, they are asking people who they know will answer in specific ways. That is not exactly the same as survivorship bias. That's just being a douchebag, usually called. Oh, but it's the same principle. And this is a statistical thing. People don't, uh, some people don't know about it. People don't, uh, people don't understand these things. If a person was thinking, wow, where do we, where should we put armor so planes survive more? The, if you don't think about why the dots are where they are, then you're going to probably put armor in places like this. And in these places, it absolutely does nothing. Because the fact that these planes returned means that there's no reason to put that much armor here. Because if the plane gets shot in these locations, it survives. Pure and simple, right? So, technically, you do the exact opposite, because you know that your sample size only shows the places that don't need to be actually armored. Essentially, it's the exact invert of the thing you initially uh, expected to see. And if you never asked your, yourself the question, why is the data the way it is, you would uh, do the completely uh, wrong, well, you would come to the absolutely wrong conclusion. And this is uninten an unintentional corruption, in the most non-corrupt way possible, of data. But data can be corrupted in many ways. For example, 
well, this is going to be more or less off the top of my head, so it's not going to be the perfect example. Uh, but let's say, P uh, let's let's say s uh, someone is doing uh, doing research on violence, and then he asks like a hundred people three questions each. The first question, let's say, is, "Do you support violence?" An extremely broad question, and you say no as a normal person. Then the second question is. Uh, do you support self-defense in case someone is being physically violent towards you? Most people would say probably yes. And then the third question is, is violence justifiable in, I don't know, again, self-defense? You need to pick better, uh, I, I would need to pick better, <laughs> better questions for this, but you get the idea. Essentially, Overall, you obviously don't think that violence is, is a good thing, that violence should be done uh, casually and so on. Thus, you answered the first question, do you endorse violence, with a no, because you don't. But you answered the second two questions with the answer yes. And, considering you are not the person that is aggregating the data, well, th from this data, they extrapolate that, well, the majority of people are for violence, because uh, they answered two out of three questions about violence with a yes, so they endorse violence. And that's essentially how they screw up the data. That is a completely legal way, a completely statistically correct way of doing things. Furthermore, they can, uh, they can be even more slimy in situations and say, well, most people tend to lean on supporting data if you want to mask it even more. Essentially, one of the easiest ways of corrupting data, corrupting questionnaires and so on, is to give people a bunch of questions and then just combining the answers to fit a certain thing. For example, you can have 10 questions about one thing that you answer with a firm no and like 3 questions that you answer with a firm, a firm yes. And then the, and then the person doing the research would, will say that, oh, well, people answered yes on this part about X, even no one actually really thinks about that. But considering you, you answered the small, small portion of the questionnaire in a specific way, they can easily say, yes, that you actually meant the opposite of what you really meant. It's an extremely slimy way, and survivorship bias is a great way of uh, showing how easily statistics can be manipulated and how uh, statistics get corrupted. Every institution has a way to uh, corrupt statistics. Even going further more down the rabbit hole, we get to a point where statistics are the least scientific way of actually doing anything. And that is not a joke, by the way. And what I mean by this is the idea, the fact that, let's say we're looking at statistics of... You go to the question of, do, do you support abortion, yes or no? People answer yes, people answer no. But then you get a little bit more specific and you ask the question of, do you support X, do you support an, uh, a yes, uh, do you support X, do you support Y? And then people start different. Their, their answer is yes or no at the grand scale, scale of things, but when we come down to the smaller scale of things, it's no longer a concrete yes and a concrete no, because everyone has different lines to draw in the sand. You understand what I'm saying? Hopefully this was, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there completely. But essentially the statistic rabbit hole goes extremely deeply, because there's always a situation where you're most likely not looking at all the possibilities and just choosing to look at a specific part of those statistics that you want, because there's always a part to go deeper into. Violence against uh, violence uh, uh, between spouses, for example. That's actually a pretty good example. Violence between spouses. Uh, who commits most violence between spou spouses? Most people would answer men because it is men. But then we can, uh, but then we can look at, uh, look at it deeper and say, wait a minute, is it correct to actually say that men uh, men commit the most violence? Maybe this is just uh, a misdemeanor because when we look at the statistics of men who commit these atrocious acts of spousal violence, we see that 
oh, look at this, like 60% of them have problems with mental health. Wait, is it really okay to contribute the, uh, those people to mental health because they have another problem, another problem, another problem? This is the booby trap of statistics because it is, you can go extremely deep to understand are your statistics correct or not. And that's really, really hard to do. Most of the times to get the correct statistics about a certain thing, if you want to be scientific about it, is absolutely impossible. And that's, well, that's pretty much statistics in general. Kind of, kind of, kind of crazy, kind of scary.